like to um, introduce uh, John McKell. Um, he's been around in politics for so long that uh, you tend to forget some of the, uh, the things he's done. And when you actually look at his CV, it's, it's pretty impressive. Um, he was catapulted into the ministry pretty quickly in 2004 when he was the environment minister. And I suspect he's probably one of the best environment ministers we've ever had, given some of the views that John and I have shared. But um, in 2005, he had Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander affairs added to that. But uh, he then, uh, in 2006, became pretty heavy duty Minister for State Development, Industrial Relations and Employment. He then added transport to it. Um, and I suspect his rise was that meteoric, but uh, that was one reason they offered him the speakership in 2009, just to keep him uh, out of any trouble. Uh, John uh, subsequently retired from the, the parliament, uh, and he and I have had a fair bit to do with each other uh, over the years, and I think it's fair to say that we're pretty good mates. Um, most of you uh, know who I am. Um, what's relevant to our discussion tonight, from my point of view, is not a spectacular ministerial career. I chose uh, the wrong seat in the wrong election to run. Um, however, between 94 and 97, I was running effectively the Liberal Party state campaigns uh, at a local state and then the, the state end of the federal uh, election here. And since 98, I've been a commentator and uh, I also inform my commentary by online qualitative polling, which Mike Kaiser and I started doing in 2001. So there's a tradition in this analysis of uh, having people across the, uh, across the aisle. So, having put the introductions there on the table, established our bona fides. John, would you like to tell us where you think things are, where they might be heading, what you think the issues might be? The, um, the election just underway, starting on Tuesday, the lead up to it has been uh, good for any government in the Western world who's answered the pandemic properly. There's been a, a rally around the flag effect everywhere for a leader who's competent. Uh, the only one who hasn't enjoyed that uh, is Trump, and nor should he get in, in Australia as the following. It has meant that the media uh, coverage has been all COVID. It has meant that leaders have been able to give presentations uh, every day because the public wants information. That public being um, uh, employees as well as businesses about what, what it means for them. What that has done is uh, meant that any opposition at any level has, has been crowded out uh, looking for commentary. And so that has been the lead up to the election. This election, this time, uh, we've taken out all the silliness with elections. Uh, in the past, there's been speculation on the speculation, meaning when will they call the election? Well, we now know with a fixed term, 31st of October is always going to be the date from now on. Uh, what that means is you've got to have a, an election period. The parliament has been prorogued. The government's now in caretaker. And in the lead up to that, you saw activity from both the government and the opposition. As of Tuesday now, both uh, leaders, both leaders of the major parties uh, get equal equal coverage in, I might say, a very diminished media market. Uh, no sooner had the uh, colloquial gun uh, been fired for this and everything was swamped by the federal budget and reaction to the federal budget. And that's been the, the prelim. Uh, the Premier has, I think, started out confidently enough, uh, heading out, as you would expect, into the regions. I think Graham will cover that. Uh, later on in their commentary. Uh, the opposition leader, uh, mysteriously to me, started off in a seat that they already held, uh, which seemed to me a, a defensive uh, position, but it may well be that she wanted to get a story out of the day. But she followed that up on the second day with a seat that they can't possibly win. Um, so I think there was, a bit, I think in the planning sense, there's a bit untidy there. There hasn't been much in the way of polling to inform our debate. Graham's done some excellent work uh, with, uh, I think, the commentary, and I'll allude to that later on. Uh, the only other poll of, of some note was an Omni poll, which was conducted on behalf of the mining company. And the 
people making much of a YouGov poll that was released by the Courier Mail on election eve. But frankly, that's been the only poll since July. It is not uh, a climate where there's been a plethora of polls uh, from which we can make, if you will, an informed commentary. Uh, what the polling that Graham has done, backed up by Omnipol, backed up by YouGov, indicates this, that the support for One Nation in all of those polls seems to be down. And uh, as we head into an election, which today was characterised by a preference swap between the Catters and One Nation, um, they're effectively swapping uh, preferences in Catters' case with a with a show that seems to be weakened. Uh, I think the issues as they are, and I'll wrap it up at this point, will be the traditional Queensland one. Is Queensland elections are always full on leadership, as I dare say any election is. This one is going to have a pandemic health overlay as well as an economic response overlay. And uh, beyond that, uh, I think, and it's always said that this one will be 93 different by-elections. Okay, thanks, John. Um, so we seem to, um, often on uh, radio, when Steve Austin would bowl a question up to us, John and I would look at each other and say, I know what you think, and it's the same as what I think. How do we make this answer interesting? Well, I don't think we're actually going to have that problem tonight. Um, so John's right, there hasn't been a lot of polling around. What there is is basically within the margin of error. So it's either got the LNP 5248 or it's got the uh, ALP ahead 5248. Um, the last poll in the Courier Mail purported to um, tell us what was happening in the regions. Now, I've deduced, I haven't actually confirmed this with anyone, but it's a sample of 2,000 people. And I think if you're a good pollster, doing a sample of 2,000 around the state and trying to make predictions about particular regions, that you split that equally between the regions because your sampling error uh, is not dependent on the size of the population. It's dependent on the size of the number of people you talk to. And they made uh, comments about four different regions, uh, which means there must have been 500 people sampled in each. The plus or minus on 500 at the 50% mark, 95% confidence level is somewhere around 5%. So that means that a, cons uh, that a pollster who is competent uh, will get a result somewhere between 55 and 45% for each party, 95% um, of the time. Um, so it doesn't tell you that much. Um, but the fact that they're all sort of hitting the mark around the same spots, it says to me that there aren't large swings about to happen this election. It says that it's probably more or less a status quo election. Um, and what that means in terms of seats is that Anastasia Palaszczuk might push a bit further into having a majority government, or she might slip into having a minority government. But in my view, it's very hard to see the LNP winning the um, nine seats, I think it is, that they need to get a majority government. Um, and that means that on most scenarios, a hung parliament is more likely than anything else. Now, I'm not saying that Labor won't win, um, uh, but I'm just saying that there's more scenarios with a hung parliament uh, than anything else. And those scenarios are quite interesting because some of them involve the Greens and there's a question on how many seats the Greens will have and we'll probably discuss that because we're sitting in a potential Green win here at Wollongabba. Um, and um, uh, there's um, also some interesting possibilities with Cat Australia Party and, and One Nation and one shouldn't assume that Catters are necessarily going to go um, with, the co with the LNP rather. And of course, there's a, an independent, Sandy Bolton, sitting in Noosa, who's uh, pretty progressive in the uh, uh, left-wing meaning of the word, not the Australian Institute of Progress meaning of the word. Uh, so again, she could be quite interesting. Uh, I think not so much that there's 93 elections. In this one, I think you're looking at four or five, uh, and, and they're in, in regions, and we'll basically look at the regions and go through them. Uh, but broadly speaking, Brisbane resonates much more strongly with the um, progressive agenda, so the Jackie Trad type agenda. Uh, and um, the ALP's done so well in Brisbane that there's not that much left for them to win in this area. Uh, then you get out into the sunshine and the Gold Coast where you've got a 
a different uh, way of looking at the world. You've got a different sort of demographic. Um, it's uh, much less worried about things like climate change and more worried about jobs and those sorts of things. And it's much more a small business uh, uh, environment. So they respond to slightly different issues. Um, but um, then you've got the old National Party country, which is west of the Great Divide, uh, where they look pretty comfortable there as they have every election since 1957. Um, but then when you get north of Noosa, there's an entirely different demographic uh, cuts in. Uh, you get a north-south divide. You've got people up there who want a separate Queensland state in the north, which is a refrain that's been around for at least 150 years. Um, and they're people who are interested in agriculture and resources. And there's a problem for the uh, ALP there because it works against uh, them fighting the Greens down here in uh, Brisbane if they give too much away to people in the regions. And we saw in the federal election a big swing to the federal Liberal Party uh, in seats like Capricorn out there. So I think we'll have some interesting conversation in there. It's also a problem for the LNP uh, because it's territory that One Nation and the Canada Australia Party can do well in. And the fact that the LNP has to make up so many seats is a reflection of the fact that those minor parties have done pretty well and they've solidified themselves, particularly cadders, into some of those seats. Um, and the, this is where I'll finish. One of the things that my polling suggests is that while there's been a drop off in the One Nation support, there's been an increase in cadder support. And I think that we're starting to see the evolution in Queensland, or should I say re evolution, uh, of a multi party system. We had a genuine multi-party three-way split uh, from sort of 57 through to the, the 80s when the National Party became dominant over the Liberal Party and almost wiped them out. Uh, the merger of the uh, Liberal and National Parties was supposed to ser solve those problems. Um, and uh, I'm not sure that they have. I think what they've done is they've made room on the, the shoulder of the, the road, so to speak, for a agrarian... Uh, populist party uh, that um, can take positions that neither the LNP nor the ALP can uh, while winning seats all around the, the state. So that's my take on the election coming up. Um, were there any questions coming in with this? Okay, well, we must have done a pretty good job, John. Um, so look, the first area I thought we might look at is um, Brisbane. So uh, I split Brisbane up into inner and out. And so, I sort of draw the, the inner circle these days, suburbs like on the south, uh, Mount Gravatt, uh, Sunnybank, uh, which is sort of the, where Brisbane went to in the, in the 80s. Um, and on the north, you're talking places like Aspley. Mm -hmm. uh, then you get out past there, you're talking places like Morayfield, uh, Redlands, uh, over on the east. Um, I'm not quite sure how to classify Ipswich, but I'd probably put it kind of in this this area, uh, and then down on the south, you're probably looking at um, uh, De Brenny and um, in Springwood. So, and, and both of those areas have slightly different characteristics, mm. but one characteristic they've got in, in common with um, each is that they're dominated by the ALP. Mm. It's just who comes second tends to be the, the question that's, mm. that's different. So, mm. Tom, if you'd like to. Well, let's start off with the, we'll start off with the inner south. Um, so by that I'm going to say South Brisbane, um, uh, Green Slopes, Miller, and I'll, I'll halt it at that for, for this room. The, the Liberal Party decision to put um, Labor last is essentially a decision to put Jack in trad uh, uh, last uh, and put the Greens up. Um, my own view of that is um, it's an interesting thing. It is the question is will the Liberal Party follow the head of OK? Will the Liberal Party people follow the head of OK? Um, I've seen commentary around Sally Ann Atkinson saying, look, she likes Jackie Trad. My hunch is that when you look at Graham's analysis, and Graham's analysis is backed up by the Omnipole analysis, one of the concerns of conservative voters is a Labor Greens alliance. Uh, that um, preference swap, whilst it does a whole lot of things, actually enables what people on the conservative side fear. Um, now, 
my hunch is that Trad can get there, she can get there with about 50% of the Liberal Party vote, and I reckon she'll get it. Uh, the Greens have been resurgent in the council level, uh, both in the inner south and the inner north and north west. And I'm putting that down to the fact that Labor has been hopeless for 16 years in the council. After 16 years earlier this year, they couldn't make a dent on the Liberal Party and any dent they did make came via the Greens. Um, this is a lamentable performance, but I don't suspect it's going to be replicated necessarily uh, with the Greens picking up anything more than they've got. The Greens are past masters at using the Lonningham poll, uh, and they've done that for several elections to declare this uh, phenomenal number of seats increase. And one thing about it, it never materialises. Yeah. Well, why don't we talk yeah. about the, yeah, yeah, the, sure. uh, the Greens yeah. a bit? Yeah, yeah. I think we can leave Translates and Miller alone because I don't think they're going anywhere. I think they're going to sit with you guys. Mm -hmm. um, but I think this, this seat and the the LNP uh, deal uh, with, uh, well, not deal, but the LNP uh, announcement that they're going to preference um, uh, the ALP last. I think that's, I think it's the right decision, um, speaking from an LNP point of view. But I think they've got some big communication problems with it. Um, so you just outlined one, which was people saying, we don't want a Greens ALP alliance. Um, that, now, that's a concern. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, now, Sally Ann, I don't think it's a big secret. Um, Jackie Trad's married to her. Oh, yeah. No, <laughs> no, sort no, of, no. You know, there's, a, there's a family connection there, which no, no, I think is moving Sally Ann, but I've had some mail from um, people uh, who I don't know, but I've, one person in Maywa saying, well, there's no way the LNP would be doing that for exactly the same reasons that, that you've given. Um, the other thing that's happening is that CATA out in the regions and One Nation are criticising the LNP because it puts the Greens ahead of the ALP. And they're saying to people out in the regions, this proves that the Liberal Party's taken over the National Party and they're now soft on the Greens. This is something they're doing to support the Greens. Um, and I think what the LNP's got to do is to come out and say, look, in South Brisbane, um, we're not going to win the seat. You've got a choice of two Greens there. One's called Jackie Trad. Uh, and one's Amy um, McMahon. Uh, one of them would be in a future government and would possibly be running it. The other one can only influence a future Labor government. So this isn't a decision between Greens and the Labor Party. This is a decision between two people who believe pretty much the same thing. But I haven't heard the LNP enunciating that. And if, if they don't get on top of that issue, it's going to create problems for them. So, yeah, it's certainly... Um, Robbie Catter was prosecuting that argument. I understand too that elements of the old National Party are aghast at that decision. Mm. Uh, um, you could advance it further and say, look, hang on, it, it's not just about the Greens. They're actually putting vaxxers, uh, animal rights people, uh, and you might say, oh, hang on, what are you talking about? Well, there's 15 seats where LNP preferences are counted. That is, the, there are 13 seats where it's Labor versus One Nation and the LNP preferences matter. There's um, another seat that South Brisbane we dealt with, mm -hmm. and there's another seat where uh, Traeger, where the LNP matter in that seat. Well, Traeger, that's Robbie Catter's. Correct. It's the contest is between Catter and Labor. The LNP run third. And that's what I think Catter's... Catter, well, uh, they uh, wouldn't preference Labor before Catter, though. No, but, but it, it is... What he's trying to do is draw a, a differentiation between the majors and him. And it's just yet another seat where they, you know, they'll want to be careful how they nuance yeah, that. Yeah, that. That's yeah, all I'm yeah, saying. Yeah, 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 it, yeah. it won't matter. No. Uh, um, but, I mean, the thing with preferences is they want to be read as expressing oh, approval of another party. And for some reason, we've got ourselves in this situation because, you know, the ALP in the last, uh, uh, not the last federal election, but the election before won Longman. 
on the basis of one nation preferences and preference one nation as well. Well, so, you know, everyone does it because preferences aren't about saying, yeah, these are the, the people we prefer. It's about making sure you maximise your vote so you maximise your chance of winning the election. And the other feature too, let me, if I might, just yeah, no, no, no. in the yeah. academic sense of it, they're a recommendation. The phenomenon these days is my, uh, increasing numbers of people don't take any out of aid card. Um, and even then, a lot of them don't follow the recommendation of the parties. For example, uh, in its most recent outing in Karun, mm. where they couldn't hand out how to vote cards, the preference flow from the Greens to Labor was down, mm. and the preference flow from One Nation to the Coalition was down. Mm. So the LNP. Mm. I, I confess I didn't follow it in, in uh, Bund Bundamba, yeah. uh, because there was an unusual circumstance there. Yeah. But uh, that is, the LNP ran third or or thereabouts, and, and I wasn't so much worried about where the, where the minor party preference flow went. The other thing, and I, uh, I say this, and I know nominations haven't closed and this circumstance may change, but the exchange between the Catters and Hanson, they're only running to get against one another in five seats at the moment. So a preference flow to one another there is interesting. Yeah, we might yeah, leave that, leave that again, until we get up to the, uh, the yeah, regions. So, so, so just looking at Brisbane, John, rather than trying to go through each seat and so yeah. on, so the Greens, well, we agree that there's only two real possibilities for them, Maywar, which they already hold, mm. and, and South Brisbane. Yeah, there, there's... What about... Um, there's chatter about McConnell. The, the, the Greens have done very well there. Um, against Labor, this time they had poll Labor, but it was at the council level with an atrocious campaign. Mm. Whereas the Brisbane Central, sorry, McConnell, goes just out a little bit further. Mm. And I don't know that that lass who's run several times for the Greens will overwhelm Grace Grace mm. this, this time. Mm. Um, and the, the Liberals are there about. The, the problem for the LNP, if we, if, if we go slightly west and slightly east, yeah. um, the seat of Clayfield has become marginal for some reason. Um, oh, well, it always has to suit yeah. you know, Liddy Clark. Yeah, yes, indeed, indeed. And, and the boundaries have got slightly worse for the Liberals. But what has happened there is the Green vote has risen. Mm. And I'm, I'm, I haven't really, I don't understand the seat that much. But there is a concern from some elements with the LNP that eventually the Greens there will overwhelm Labor. It would be similar to my life. I, yeah. I mean, I know the seat fairly well. I basically yeah. live in it these days. And um, uh, that's the, you know, the so-called doctor's wives, uh, which is a gross generalisation to yeah. possibly yeah. insult to some female uh, residents in Brisbane. But that middle-class Greens phenomenon, which we've seen in my life, is I think what's happening in Clayfield, but I think uh, the weight of money that Clayfield in some of those areas is just sort of, just it's, a, it's another um, uh, step above Maywa. So I think it'll probably stay, but you wouldn't, you know, you'd want to make sure you have the right member in there. The, the other one, Graham, that it, it strikes me that they're now overwhelming Labor, and it's not just a recent phenomenon, uh, is the seat of Mogul. The Greens at the council level have overwhelmed Labor for mm. quite a few mm. elections now. Yes. Um, and I'm not sure whether, I have to look it up, but well, I'm not sure whether they overwhelmed Labor last time in Mogul. But the, they do. Eight, they do. Yeah. the acreage nature of that seat, um, I, it's one, if I was a Liberal part, LNP person, I would not take that seat as being one that you could park and wander off. Well, it's something I would keep an eye on. The model is an interesting seat because, so, so the LNP in, in this inner part of Brisbane has only four seats. It's got Mogul, it's got um, uh, Everton, which is Tim Mander, mm. it's got Clayfield. Mm. So both Mogul and Everton are on about 5%. But Everton is a seat which is strong labour roots, uh, Mogul is the only seat that the Liberal Party held in Brisbane after 
1986, mm. I think it was, yeah, with David Watson. He held on by a couple of hundred votes. Yes. So, but, you know, no, 1998, Bruce, was it? Or no, 2001. Anyway, yeah. um, um, when Bruce Flegg got it, he actually made it just about ultra safe. Mm -hmm. Now it's drifted back to 5%. That set tells you something about the LNP in Brisbane. The other two seats you've got are Chatsworth, which is a, a 2%er. Mm -hmm. uh, sorry, that's the only other seat you've got, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, oh, and sorry, and, uh, and Clayfield. So they're both on about 2 2.5%. Mm -hmm. um, do you think the ALP are any chance in Chatsworth or Clayfield? Uh, I, I, I don't believe so, uh, even though the margin's small. I, I, I just think that phenomenon that you've said, uh, my idea of marginal seats is you have a very safe LNP component, which that seat has, and you need to have a very safe Labor component. Mm. I think it's that second bit that's missing. Yeah. Uh, and therefore, the margin is with Tim Nichols. Chatsworth, people have been mentioning Chatsworth to me in recent weeks. Well, it was Terry McEnroth's seat and it was yeah. very safe as Terry. But was it? That is, I, I don't know how much the boundaries have shifted, nor do I know how much the Carindale area has grown. Yeah. So certainly in the... There's been gentrification in Carina Heights yes, and places indeed. like that because you can buy a block of land. You can buy a place with a house on it for, say, 600000 I'm not sure about that. Um, but somewhere around there, which is a building block. Yeah. And people then come along and they build a house yeah. and they've got city views and they're, they're you know, a good, good yeah. uh, run 10 minutes out of the city. And, and if you look at the council vote, I know you don't, but Adrian Schrimmer's wall. Well, it's a bit sorry, further out. Is it? Yeah. Yeah, okay. Um, look, it could be thereabouts. Uh, Labor's got a good candidate there, I would argue. Uh, but Steve Minnikan, uh, works hard. Uh, I just, I, I just don't see that. Yeah, yeah. No, I mean, I, I think Steve's probably safe. Yeah. He's, he's an extraordinarily hard worker. Uh, he's also very efficient, um, which I suspect means that if a person rings the office, it actually gets answered. You know, the sorts of things that well, lose your votes. He, he, um, he, Any time I've had an interaction with him, uh, he will ring me back. Yeah. and you know, uh, and. Sure, not, not for long, and that's okay. Yeah. Uh, I, I just, I, I'm not okay. convinced so, about that. So basically what we're saying is we think that the LNP will hold what they've got in Brisbane in yeah. the Senate yeah. course. So, in that, in that so course. the second question then, John, is um, they're targeting Aspley, Mansfield and Mount Omni. Yes, and so, so they should. So how's Labor doing in those seats? Uh, Aspley was won last time with an aberrant One Nation preference flag, which got uh, Bart Mellish over the line. Uh, he's worked hard, um, but then... He's AWU faction? Yes, yeah. and the, the Liberal Party have endorsed a former high-profile councillor there. I, I really couldn't tell, but I do know this. Once Labor starts shedding votes in the southeast, if you're losing in the regions, then mm. you're done. Uh, spring... Uh, Sorry, Mansfield, is Mansfield. A, Mansfield, in my view, is a classic change of government seat that Ian Walker uh, held out uh, the, in 2015 mm -hmm. because I think he worked hard. What happened to Ian Walker is that it just caught up with him in 2017 with a boundary change and a One Nation preference flag. If Labor, if there's a change of government, Labor will lose Mansfield. It's just that simple. So, so what about, you talk to me about what you call the sophomore effect, which is yeah. when someone wins a seat for the first time, what happens is the previous member's personal vote disappears and the person who's the member has an opportunity to build a personal vote. That's correct. Which even if it's 1% and the other person's personal vote was 1%, and they can be much larger than that, is a 2% movement. Yes. But... And that's great. And you so can Corinne have, McMillan, would she have... She might have a sophomore effect, but if the swing's three, you lose by one word. Um, Mount Omni, I think, is a different kettle of fish. Uh, uh, it, it normally goes with the government of the day. And uh, it, again, was a holdout in 2015 because what seems to happen in that seat is that 
uh, because of the multicultural nature of it, mm. you can build something of a of a wall because it's a very safe council wall. Yeah, it? Absolutely, yeah. and barely and it changed used. it changed councillors as well, and and still kept still, still kept it. Yes, um, whereas uh, it, it shouldn't have. But it, again, it's held. You know, again, I'll put that down to a very bad Labor campaign. But the last there uh, has worked hard. Uh, she came very, very close to winning in 2015 and with a lot more resources mm. could have won it in 2015, mm. narrowly missed out. So it's, it's Jessica Pugh. Yeah, and yeah, the, right. the, the other thing about uh, Mount Omni, Graham, is that the boundaries have, at the redistribution, changed it. And whether it's character now with that boundary change is still a change of government seat, mm. I don't know. Mm. It, it took over, it went to Ipswich Road yeah. and took off some pretty choice bits of Labor territory mm. uh, from Nala. Oh, okay. Now, um, you might argue it did that in the council too. Uh, I, I'm just reserving judgment yeah. on that one. Well, I, I think that it's point worth making that the LNP at council level dominates the council, but I think it's 21 or something. Labor's out. got five. So it's got five, 21 out of 26 seats. Whereas when you look at it at a state level, Labor dominates by a very similar margin. Margins, yeah. so, so what we're basically saying here is we think that the LNP are going to hold the seats they've got. They might pick up one or maybe two. If there's a change if, of government, if there's a change of government, government they'll pick up two. They might pick up one because they've got a good candidate. Preference flows aren't going to be the same this time, maybe, as last time. And, you know, Bart Mellish might still be up against it. So then you go to the next, yeah, the next rank. The next An the interesting thing for me in the next ring is that the LNP tends not to be the party coming second. It tends to be one nation. Yes, that's right. We saw that in the Bundamba by-election, where the LNP were in the mid-20s and one nation was in the low 30s, I think, from memory, something like that. Uh, and ended up being a 60-40 seat to the ALP, uh, but previously with Joanne Miller, it would be more like a 70-30 seat to the ALP. So it was a 10% swing against them uh, in that area. But that just demonstrates the, the principle about One Nation. So what are the seats you talk about in, in this area? Yeah, the, uh, I would go straight up to the change of government seats there. I think Pine Rivers is a classic change of government seat, and so is Springwood. And this is the, f I'm just not detecting in Springwood uh, a change of government there. Uh, so, De Bruyne is not that popular in his electorate, is he? Uh, I mean, he cancelled that um, deal where they would have done a whole lot of stuff with the welfare housing in Woodbridge because it's a, for those people who don't know Springwood, it's sort of, it's a mixture of, quite uh, middle class um, housing and also some very traditional labour uh, housing with a lot of um, um, so, so housing commission. So, housing. Yeah. so, so there was a deal in, in Woodridge to um, have a whole lot of private enterprise groups come in, federal government money, 400 million sitting on the table. Mm. And De Brenny, the local member, who's also the minister well, candidate, yeah. and, and the story I was given was it was because of union pressure on him. Uh, that may may well be. May well, well be. The, the, the tro tro he had the mayor coming out against him. Uh, yeah, yeah, everybody had yeah. opened offices on the basis of this, had to shut them down and so on. You'd have to think there's a bit of residual angst about that, surely. The, the problem with the analysis is that it didn't affect his electorate. It affected Woodbridge and going across to the west. Right. So n nothing much in his yeah. the Where the, the issue, and I, don't, I won't prolong this mm. one, it, it, in Logan Centre, you've got a whole lot of homes that were built there, what, 40 years ago, that are now occupied by widows in, in three and four bedroom mm -hmm. houses. Uh, what this proposal was going to do was put them in. Oh, it was a great proposal. Okay. Well, no issue. It had never been an issue with the New South Wales uh, Labor governments and wasn't an issue with the Beatle government. Yeah. Uh, I won't go into the decision yeah. other than uh, because this could be a family show and uh, you don't really want to be profanity. <laughs> uh, so he wasn't, he himself wasn't impacted by that. I'm just saying about Springwood, it yeah. is a classic change of government seat. If there's a change yeah. of government on, 
Springwood will fall. Easy. That yeah. will happen. Um, although the margin, he's on about it. Yeah, it won't matter. It won't, won't matter. It's, it's an outer metric. His problem. margin's probably better than it looks because the candidate last time for the LNP was Julie Tolte, who's a council in Redlands, mm. which, although this isn't a Redlands seat, still has a lot of campaigning smarts and yes. must have had the ability to mobilise some um, yes. resources, etc. And she's a, a good um, So person. going around, talking about Redlands, yeah. what are the um, chances of the LNP uh, uh, winning uh, Redlands? That's not, so, that's not the story I'm hearing. She beat Matt McKechn. And if you're going to get a, though, isn't sure, a but if you're going to get a sophomore effect there, you'll get. So a, this is Kim Richards. Yeah, she she's was a, an architect. A, uh, no, uh, no, worked for an architect. Oh, okay. Um, she, she would get a small sophomore effect because Redlands is a distinct community, okay. and uh, the groups are compact, if you will, yeah. and you could get around right. that. Uh, I think there's a residual strength in that seat. It was held by Labor for for years and, and then lost on several so It's an interesting seat because yeah. back in the uh, 80s, we ran three corner contests yeah. with the LNP, or the Liberal Party rather than the Nats. Different seat there. Uh, it, uh, in the 95 election, um, it, we were talking about running a three corner contest there, um, but we um, ended up not running because the membership down in Redlands wouldn't support it. So the National Party actually won the seat yeah. that time around. Then it went Labor. Um, and uh, then it was uh, won by Peter Dowling, yes, yeah. uh, yeah. who was a local councillor down there. And then replaced uh, by the LNP after he. Um, well, that's a sad story, and it being a uh, family uh, yes. hour, we won't go into that no, one either. No, no but. Uh, so, okay, so why don't we leave that? The other yeah, thing no, that I've noted you got is so this is coming to the north, uh, Pumice Stone. Yeah, I just want to. I just want to flag to everyone this, and I might be wrong on this one, mm -hmm. the seat that Mark Robinson holds. Oh, it would you Yeah. So this seat takes Cleveland, yep. and it goes out to Stradbroke Island, or Stradbroke Island. Okay. The, Mark normally, against the ALP, wouldn't, there would be no problem in holding that. The fly in the ointment, if, and she won't like me referring to it, is the lady who ran for the mayoralty against Karen Williams last time went within you know two and a half percent, three percent mm. of beating Karen Williams. Mm. She is now the independent candidate in that seat. Mm -hmm. And here's here's the rub part. It, it it's got the nooses about it, if I can use that term. It's mm. a, a high profile independent. And we had a look at her ward vote mm. and overlaid that yeah. over the, the seat. Mm. And she beat Karen Williams in, in, that in, in that seat. So was that a turn to harbour? Yes, it was. So yeah. for people who don't know about it, the, where you take the ferry to go to Stradbroke Island, it's called turn to harbour. And uh, the council is in the middle of um, um, not just the council, but the state government because it was a priority project. Uh, in the process of getting a project through there with uh, Walker Corporation, which will, I guess one way of describing it is a kind of gravy bay on steroids. Um, so you'll get a, a good ferry terminal, but you'll also get some canal estates. Uh, there's some environmental issues there, which I don't think are particularly strong environmental issues involving a, a migratory bird, which apparently can fly halfway around the globe successfully, but can't... Uh, find somewhere to move temporarily while the uh, uh, excavation works are on. But anyway, some of the locals are steamed up about that. And then you'd have some interesting issues on Stradbroke Island as well, uh, with the cessation of mining and the yeah. Aboriginal issues yeah. there, etc. Absolutely. But I disagree with you in, in saying to Noosa in that it's, there's a bit of wealth there in the rain. No, 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 that's not what I was thinking. You're just saying that an independent. Uh, an independent who ran close for the yeah. minority and is lining up again uh, okay. eight months later for a state government I contest. I think Glen Ellens might be a different kettle of fish as a former member of NURSA than Mark Robinson. Yeah, I'll I, I defer to you on that. It, it's something that people have pointed out to me. Yeah. I was curious. It's fun to watch. Over, I, over, I, over I haven't thought about that. Um, and I pass no judgment 
and for or against Mark, who I've, I've dealt with and I, I like, and uh, more in the same way with Glenn Helms. Yeah. When I say it had the nooses about it, it just was a classic. She had uh, Sandy Bolt had run for mayor. Mm. Marilyn missed out, mm. lines yeah, up again, yeah. um, runs. That's that's what. Yeah. Okay, you want to talk about Pumstone? Yes, Pumstone. Pumstone looks labour. Um, labour disgraced itself totally by running uh, Rick Williams, who, who in a climate where everyone was struggling for a candidate, he he was. Uh, um, uh, to put it uh, bluntly, um, there were better candidates. And he was expelled from the Labor Party. There were allegations of uh, uh, well, I was, assault and all yeah, sorts. It was in the past. Yeah, I won't go into any of it. It was pretty but, nasty. Um, Labor, in spite of all of that, narrowly lost. Yeah, it's less than 1%. And what's happened is that uh, Labor's lining up again. Uh, the LNP have got... Uh, well, you've had the other thing that the LNP member who won us, yeah, has, who has might resigned. have got a sophomore effect, is, has resigned. Has, has resigned. Yeah, and um, I say to anybody listening, this phenomenon of people serving one term and going, get used to it uh, because there's nothing holding them in anymore. But hey, we can discuss that another okay. day. All right, so but Labor would have hopes of winning that seat. All right, so I just want to keep it moving. Yeah, so sorry, we can yeah. cover all the ground. So Gold Coast. I held you up. Um, no, no. So Gold Coast, you've got two. Well, I've got one ALP seat at risk, which mm. is Gay, mm. um, and LNP at risk. I've got uh, Bonnie Burley Heads and Corumba. Yes. Um, um, yeah, you go first on this okay, one. Okay. Right, I've, well, I've got an outline. Well, yeah. well, well, Gay and. Um, I'd be surprised if the ALP loses it because I just don't think there's a big swing going on here one way or the other. Uh, and uh, the candidate there, um, uh, first termer, um, she uh, was chosen last election to uh, introduce the Premier, I think, at the, uh, the campaign launch. Um, so she's regarded as, a, as an up and comer. Um, so she's regarded as an up and comer. I'll um, give us some credit for um, obviously having some uh, some talent. So if there's not much of a swing on. I'm not sure that it's uh, really at risk. The LNP seats are at risk. I think they're probably um, all okay. Uh, the one that would worry me most would be Corumban, and, and the reason for that is that it was won at a by-election. Um, and what happens at by-elections is that you have all the party strengths behind you. There's a lot riding on them in terms of prestige, etc. Um, and that was only six months ago. So you've got a candidate who's very green. She wasn't a, a member of the party long before she got pre-selected. She's very good. She's a, a former uh, public prosecutor. <coughs> She's lived around the area most of her life. She was in the Crumban RSL uh, as a young girl and, and did her patrols, etc. cetera. Uh, she's married Surf to- Surf Life Saving Club, yeah. Yep, Surf Life Saving Club, where you go, the Vikings. Um, her husband uh, <coughs> was a mechanic, had his own business for a while, but uh, now works um, for um, um, come to me in a second. Um, and uh, she's got two young kids. So, you know, she's quite a good candidate, but she's just run an election six months before. She's not used to this sort of stuff. She's now got, a, she's on her own, she's got to raise money, et cetera, et cetera. The ALP is running the same candidate that they ran previously. <coughs> who was in the in the field for quite a while because no one expected Jan Stuckey, the previous member, to resign when she did. Apart from I've told John Paul Langbrook, so I'll tell you why after we're off air. Um, so that could be an interesting one. It's uh, a one and a bit uh, percent margin, one point two, I think, percent margin there. Uh, the other thing about the Gold Coast is that it's uncertain in my mind how COVID plays down there because. These are people who don't define themselves as necessarily living just on the Gold Coast. They call Tweed Heads and Coolangatta the Twin Towns for a reason. And in fact, um, uh, Laura Gerber, the uh, local member there, was born at Terranora Lakes, which is just over the border. She's a perfect living and walking example of how people don't draw distinctions mm. uh, at the Tweed River. So the, the boundary closures there probably play differently than anywhere else in the state. Oh, the other factor there is uh, that uh, Clive Palmer's wife's running there. Um, and um, I've just spent some time 
down in the electorate, the only electoral material that we got was from the United Australia Party. So, mm. so he's he's uh, he's barracking for the LNP, I think. Mm. Uh, and Burley Heads. <coughs> Burley Heads. Um, I mean, it's been held by the Labor Party in the, in the recent past, but you know, I just don't think there's a big swing on uh, on the Gold Coast. You know, the, the poll we were talking at, about before said a three percent swing. Well, that puts Carmen at risk, but it doesn't put Burley. However, you've uh, just trying to think who it is. You've uh, pre-selected a uh, well, pre-selected. I think it was a captain's pick. Uh, the premier has pre-selected a uh, world famous surfer who's so famous I can't. Uh, was it not Robert Bartholomew? Was it Robert? Pull yep. the Robert out of the hat. Sure. The uh, other seat, other other seat that we should mention is Bonnie. Bonnie is the most Labor seat on the Gold Coast. How do I know that? Because what makes Broadwater and Southport beyond the reach of Labor now is all the Labor bits got dumped into that seat. Labor didn't win it. Uh, young O'Connor, Sam O'Connor for the LNP there will have a sophomore effect. Uh, they tell me he's worked hard. But if, if there was a movement on there, you'd want to watch that one. Mm. The one that we've missed out, and it's not, I, I grant you, it's not one where there's a lot of surf going yeah. on, is Coomera. Now, let me explain why. Coomera is the most over quota seat in the state. It's 25% over quota, and somebody listening will say, no, that's not right, it's more than that. It is growing phenomenally. It has 45,000 people on the roll, and where it's growing is in Pipama and Ormo, and um, that dem so mm. the margin there may have so moved. 3.47 on the last election. Yeah, and the what I'm saying is that the, that uh, may well have gone by now with the growth. Uh, it's, I'm not saying it's a, a lay down mosaic, but I do know, having represented growth areas, mm -hmm. once you get in growth that heavy, yeah, yeah. they're very hard to keep yeah. up with. But I also know, having lived in a gentrifying area for a long time, that if you get people in who are 60, 40 labour, uh, it's only 20% of that group. So if it's a thousand people, you get another 200 voters yeah. net. Yeah. So it does take longer than you might think. Oh, sure. It's just that that, I, I was quite staggered when I looked at, uh, don't forget the, the, the redistribution was in 2017, a mere three years mm -hmm. ago. And that seat is so massively over quite yeah. already. Uh, it's just, uh, I, I don't know anything about it, but no mm -hmm. inside knowledge of it. When I look at that, that just says to me that's one I keep an eye on. That's mm. all. Okay, so we've got about 11 minutes left to go, John. So, so you wanted to talk about Warrego. Why don't we go yeah. right out west? Yeah, Warrego, this is uh, the only reason I even mention Warrego is this. This is a seat that is now a contest between the LNP and the Catters. Why, why that's important is this. Uh, if you go back and listen to Graham's introduction, it, it's all there. The story is there that Graham has told, and that is writ large about the Catters. This is one seat where the Catters have broken out of the shadow of Kennedy. Uh, the Catters do well in the federal seat of Kennedy, held by Bob Catter Sr. This seat is beyond that, and it rep I'm not going to repeat mm, yeah. everything you've said. It's just worth keeping an eye on that seat. Because if there's any rumblings at all out there about the, 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 the National Party component of the LNP not representing the true interests of rural people, uh, then that can be one. That's all. Yeah. And it's, it's a seat where One Nation didn't do particularly No, they don't ever. do well out there. So, and that tells you that the CATA yep. is getting a different market to, or maybe the same market, but it's able to reach beyond that. And, and it's able to itself as a respectable party, yes, uh, rather than a kind of a roughneck party. Got it. Yeah, that's, that's okay, all right. Okay, so Sunshine Coast, I don't think anything's at risk there, but you might, um, you might disagree. Uh, the, I think the, the independent will be fine. Uh, um, uh, the, uh, and the rest are all owned by the LNP. There's a couple of colourful um, independent. Knuckles Connolly is, is going against Fiona Simpson. Uh, that's just a bit of colour and movement. And um, I always forget his name. Um, in Budrum. Uh, Steve Dixon, I'm Steve sorry. Dixon, yeah. I'm sorry, I meant no offence. Uh, Steve Dixon is running this time as an independent. Look, he, he's run uh, for the state seat, the council, and now, and, now, sorry, and now this seat. 
uh, uh, but Brett uh, Mickelberg is the member up there in Butrum. Mm -hmm. He will get a sophomore vote and mm -hmm. he will win an increase. Mm -hmm. The only uh, seat there that I want a cursory eye on on election night is Caloundra, where the long-term member is retiring. He's been replaced uh, and the green vote there seems to be a bit high and whether that's enough to, to help Labor in, in what has been a seat uh, for the LNP since 1992. That's uh, the only bit of interest. Uh, and further north, uh, Tony Perra will hold out the One Nation Party in India. Yeah. Okay, so, so I reckon when you get above there, with Sunday is probably the most interesting one before you get to North Queensland. Uh, no, I, I, uh, the uh, Keppel is one oh, where Keppel. Uh, One Nation... Oh, uh, Class there as well. Oh, so but yeah, Kevin, Kevin is one really where, where the One Nation have some hopes. Uh, and this is ironically in Rockhampton, is where the Catters and One Nation are running. Uh, they've looked at the margin there and assumed that it's marginal. It's not. What happened there last time is the mayor of Rockhampton uh, ran, ran as an independent, got a huge chunk of vote. Uh, which knocked the Labor Party vote around in a seat that it even held in 2012. Uh, the Labor Party vote will recover in a sophomore effect. The seat of it, I'll be watching on election night is Kevin. Yeah, she, I mean, she was so popular that the uh, Anglican Dean of the Cathedral gave her a reference. Uh, and she's a very good woman. If, if, if the Labor Party had uh, got rid of Robert Shorten and, and listened to the Premier there, you'd have now. Yeah. Uh, somebody who could you elevate into Canada. Yeah. Um, so, with Sunday, uh, I couldn't give, even begin to guess. In, in your so, with uh, Sunday, is, uh, it used to be LNP. Uh, Jason Costigan, who's the member, uh, was effectively expelled. Not effectively, I think he was expelled by the LNP. He was, yeah. Uh, Over for, some um, allegations of a um, sexual nature, um, which um, were in the papers, so anyway. Go and do a Google on that. Uh, he's got less than a percent margin there. Uh, as an LNP member. As an LNP member. Uh, as an independent, I don't know whether he's tracking better or worse, uh, but it's it's territory where One Nation and the Labor Party. And the Catters. And the Catters are all um, um, competitive. So I think the LNP think they're going to take it back. Um, I wouldn't be so certain if I were them, um, but they might have polling, we don't. Yeah, I, I, honestly, that seat, uh, this is a classic preference situation. It's not going to be who finishes first or second. It'll be who finishes fifth and sixth mm. and their preferences, cats going up. Mm. Mm. I, I wouldn't like to guess in that seat. Okay, so that uh, leaves us with North uh, Queensland. As long as it's a non-Labor seat, it's it's it doesn't factor in who forms a government for Labor. It, it, it's just one more yes, clue yeah, that yeah, the yeah, LNP have got to deal with. Yeah. yeah, but from their point of view, it takes them closer to the majority. Oh, absolutely. It's part of if the they win it, absolutely. And their candidate is a lady called Amanda Cam. Yeah, and, uh, that's a well known. Uh, Ron Cam was um, the uh, yeah. Mines and Energy Minister, I think, in the BLPP. No, the Cam name is well known. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. So that, that takes us to North Queensland. Oh, heavens above. Uh, well, <laughs> I'll, I'll, I've only got three potential labour losses there, and there's no LNP holds, I don't think. Um, yeah, the, look, Barron River has been held by the government of the day since 1974. Mm. If uh, Labor lose that, they're well on their way to losing. Wow. Um, and the other change of government seat up that way is Munding Borough. Munding Borough has been held by the government of the day since 1992. Um, now, if there's a change there to the to the LNP, I mean, then Labor is on the way up. Mm. Well, these are areas that are um, affected by both resources issues. Um, so there's an emotional attachment to things like coal mining, mm. uh, industry. Mm. Uh, and the other thing is that um, some of those tourist areas in Cairns should have been devastated by the, the COVID lockdown. And, and, and While they might not blame the government for that, we know that when people are out of work, yes, they, they look around for someone to kick. Yeah. Um, the LNP in Barron River, for example, um, which um, um, so I don't know that it's necessarily a change of government seat, but anyway, it's a lady called Linda Cooper, 
who's a Division Six counsellor. Was. Yeah. Um, so it worth, um, I assume she didn't run the last election, but I think she was pretty popular. So it's one that would be worth looking at and it'd be worth no. looking at her birth results, which you have to look at them. You just have to look at that seat. It, you know, I'm classifying it as a change of government seat. I'm not, uh, I'm doing so because that's been its character. And it, uh, those of you who are politically attuned would understand what I'm saying when I say Mundingbar. So, so Mundingbar, Coralie O'Walk, Walk, uh, who was a minister and a member, resigned um, for um, basically health reasons, yeah. I think. Yeah, she's, she's, um, she's, so her replacement, Les Walker, hasn't had a lot of time to um, get set. Um, any personal vote that she had disappears. Um, law and order appears to be an issue in Townsville. I don't think it is anywhere else much in the state. Um, but uh, maybe on the Gold Coast. Um, but um, it seems to be an issue up there and the LNP has endorsed uh, Glenn Doyle, who's a police inspector, so he's got cred. But on the other side, um, so he arrests them on the other side. Um, Les Walker uh, uh, is a corrections officer. He, he detains them. Uh, so maybe they both got well, credibility on that, that but, issue. But, but Les has been... Doyle would have been in the field a lot longer yeah. and therefore has an advantage... Uh, the margin is probably not as good as it um, yeah. it looks because of overall going. Yeah, I'm, the only thing about Les Walker, he has been the local councillor. His yeah. division is wholly and solely within there. He's been the councillor there for 16 years, mm. which means Labor doesn't have to introduce him. No, 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 no. Uh, I don't care who the candidate is there. Um, he comes and goes with the government. Tony Mooney stood against Frank Tanton in, two, mm. in 1996. Um, Tony Mooney was the mayor. Tony That's Mooney right. remained the mayor. When, when they've had enough of you in that seat, as a government, you go. Well, it was an interesting seat because the Mundingborough by-election, so in the election we lost it by about 30, uh, and the Mundingborough by-election we won it by 2000. Yeah, and then uh, lost it. And, so and like, well, yeah, well... I'll take some of the credit for winning it and I'll let Frank Tandy take some of the credit for losing it. Uh, <laughs> my, point, my, my point is it, it, it doesn't matter. But it was, it was just a classic... It, it was, but it was right. also a classic, we want to hold the government to account. Sure. We're not happy about people down in Brisbane making all the decisions. I remember when I first met Frank Tandy, he said he wanted to be Mundingborough's man in Brisbane, not Brisbane's man in Mundingborough. Uh, and I thought 7.5% swing there, but... Mate, you obviously uh, have a salesman's talent for just keeping on pitching the right lines. Yeah. And he had a number of other good lines. Um, so, and, and, you know, just a huge volatility to get 2,000 mm. swing in a by-election where people knew the government actually hung on. That's right. Um, so so it, it is a government of the day seat. And Townsville's the other one I've got. Yeah, Townsville, I think Labor will um, improve its majority of that. But the reason which you base this on that. Yeah, because the LNP last election had a last name, Cassie Scott, who I think was the most outstanding candidate out of, of the 2017 election. Uh, she was uh, prodigious, well presented, and uh, I think there's a residual strength in that seat. I, I wouldn't be surprised if the Townsville seat itself uh, has a swing to Labor. Yeah. Okay, well... The candidate, or rather the member there, is a former school principal, so you'd have to assume from that that he's uh, got some cred. But the um, LNP candidate, Tom Hathaway, was a former member, apparently. He was the member. Um, and he's been a councillor. And I don't know what happened that he didn't win that. Well, he did, yeah, that's... that's I, I don't right. know. I don't, I'll have to dig into that as well. Yeah. Okay, so that's basically um, it for us at the moment. Uh, have we got any questions, Nicholas? Yeah. Go to Margie Cook. Okay. Margie Cook. Okay. Um, oh, Mike, you've, you've actually addressed oh, okay. when no, no, I was yeah. asking about other possible independents. Which seats, Margie? Uh, well, uh, you, you were talking about, I have to go back and look at my notes. Um, I can't find them just at the moment, but you, I mean, you're looking at, you're looking at Ujuru um, and Noosa um, and, and Noosa did sort of bubble up out of the, out of the depths last election. Um, so I, I'm, I'm always interested to know whether you, whether you are aware of any kind of 
independent candidate waiting in the wings, sort of ready to sort of rush out and give everybody a surprise? I'm not. Uh, that, that's, it's the seat I nominate. It, I, I'm not aware of any polling on it. It just struck me that she did incredibly well um, in, the, in March, the end of March, and now we are at the end of October, and she's right. lining up again for a seat that she outpolled the mayor in uh, on an issue that could drive her. Um, uh, it's an issue, Graham explained it, and I don't want to improve on Graham's explanation. It's just an issue that twin to Harbour that is hard for Labor and it's hard for the LNP. It's easier if you're an independent. Yeah, although there's polling in the area. Is the it? last time the mayor did any polling, which is quite a while ago, uh, which said that most people were actually in favour of twin to Harbour. Yeah, it depends on uh, it's, it's, it's fun. You know, a lot of people come from outside. A lot of the Greens activity comes from people who don't actually live in the seat. Mm. Uh, but you see numbers of people on TV and you therefore think that there's a large groundswell of support. Um, uh, and like you know, Karen Williams was on a third run. Yes. Um, and I think without wanting to be unfair to Karen, she uh, sort of had enough in a sense of being mayor and took the attitude, if I win, I win, and if I don't win, I don't win. Mm. Um, so, you know, it wasn't a, I don't think it was the most robust campaign down there by yeah, Karen, that, so. uh, I mean, to answer your question fully, uh, I know this Margaret Keach uh, is running as an independent in McAllister. Um, she was the member eight and a half years ago, but not exactly for the same seat. Uh, she possibly is trying to replicate the Hetty Johnson effort there last time. Hetty Johnson the last election in that seat was pretty well So known. the seat you're talking about? McAllister. McAllister. Uh, Which is just so people... Oh, so I'm sorry. Yeah. It's a new seat. It, it, it and it doesn't a, reference the suburb. No, it doesn't reference. It was named after McAllister. Um, it goes to the eastern side of the highway in Logan City and then goes to the uh, western side of the highway just south of Beanley, taking in Windaroo and the suburbs uh, around there. But it also has some... So is it Cornubia, is that it? Yes, it is. Cornubia, right. And it's got bars scrub. So it's up against the Logan River. Yes, it is. Yeah. And it's got Eagleby to the other side. Now, yeah. you're asking about independence. Margaret might be one to keep an eye on. Uh, I just don't think she could replicate Hetty Johnson's effort last time. It was a new seat. Um, yeah, it's in Charlie's tea. Yeah. So, and I'm not sure how many people know who Hetty Johnson is, but oh, she's sorry. a um, uh, uh, child uh, rights, I guess, the best way of um, describing a campaigner who's been around on TV for 20 or 30 years now and, and been right. associated with a variety of political parties. Oh, absolutely, and never been successful. No. In, 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 Okay, um, I think Penny Townley wanted to ask a question. Penny? Yes, hi. Just interested in, um, you know, the businesses on the Gold Coast have been impacted by border closures. Do you think there'll be a backlash in, in the electorates of the Gold Coast based on what's been happening? Well, Clive Palmer does. Whether that's a good form of research or not, I'm not sure. But, and I know that because of the material that he put in the, in the letterbox. My gut tells me that it should be an issue and it should work in the LNP's favour. Uh, my understanding is that in the last week or so of the by-election, they ran heavily on the border closure. Uh, so it was an issue then. Um, whether people have got used to walking, uh, working rather around the border uh, and it's, it's died away a bit uh, is, is another thing I'm not sure of. And the other thing I don't think we should discount too much is that People are actually scared of the virus. So on the, the qualitative polling I did, which admittedly is a straw poll, um, there was no difference in support for the Premier's position on borders anywhere in Queensland on the basis of region. It was just as strong on the Gold Coast as it was in Brisbane, as it was in Cairns, as it was um, on the Sunshine Coast. Now, you know, there, there's greater levels of uncertainty in some of those areas because they didn't have that many people coming out of it. Um, coming out of them, but still, it was pretty um, pretty uh, solid. So, I guess my answer is there might be a percenter or something like that, Penny. But if you're on two point two percent margin, 
one percent uh, hand. The other thing I guess we should throw in there is that the uh, poll that John referred to that was done recently had a three percent swing uh, against uh, the LNP on the Gold Coast. As I say, the margin of error is five, so it's not statistically significant, but often what's not statistically significant ends up being true. Mm. Um, Richard here, can you hear me? Yeah, sure, Richard. Uh, the, the Australia United Party or whatever Palmer's party is, any comment about, well, I don't know, who are they preferencing? And do you think it's, what sort of areas of Queensland are they going to have an impact in, do you think, in, in terms of uh, preferences? Um, Hard to tell? It, it, it is. And the other thing is that the extent to which Palmer can turn out anybody, I, look, I'm sure he'll turn people out for his wife and, the various relatives that he's got along. Um, but he, he, he's got Dishit Dowling running in, in um, Townsville and uh, he, he didn't hit the deck in the middle. Uh, I, I just think Palmer's a, a bit of a one-trick pony, seemed to be as such. And uh, I think um, this is not an election for that sort of person. He, he's picked the wrong issue. Uh, he picked border openings when it wasn't fashionable. Um, he, he's gone through the courts. Um, I, I just, I, I think people are, are baked on view of him. That, that doesn't mean they won't get votes. They get votes because they are not who they are, but who they are not. Uh, similar to One Nation. But, uh, well, I think Palmer's about, he's not about winning any seats in his own right. Uh, all the polling says he's not going to get many votes. Um, but that doesn't mean that he can't influence the outcome of the election. And I'm sure he wants to influence the outcome of the election. This is a guy who's heavily invested in the Bowen Basin, or the Galilee Basin, rather, mm. in coal mining. Um, plus, he's got a resort he wants to develop on the Sunshine Coast. So he'd like to have a government that um, talks to him, although his experience uh, of the government on his side of the fence uh, last time was Campbell Newman and Jeff Seney basically throwing him out of the office. Um, the reason, something that has to be explained about financing in this election is that the ALP, and John might take exception to this, but I'll have to wear that, uh, have basically tried to fiddle the donations laws to help themselves. So they put a cap on what you can spend, um, not this election, but the election after, they put a cap on how much people can donate. Um, parties get to spend... Uh, on the basis of the number of seats that they run in. Uh, so one way Clive can, sorry, and the other thing you, you need to understand is an individual organisation, so a union or a, a person or a think tank or whatever, or can, an only, can only spend a million dollars. They're capped at a million dollars. So Clive on his own can only spend a million dollars. That doesn't give him a really big bang when you uh, take into yeah, account. But, but he's, that's not how he's running. Yeah, but hang on, hang on. Yeah. Tell me after I've, I've finished. Mm -hmm. So so he can only spend a million. He spent something like 63, I think, in the federal election. And it may well have been responsible for some of those swings in central Queensland. But he can spend about another 8 million if he runs in every seat around Queensland uh, by donating. There's no cap on his donation to his own political party. And then that political party can spend the money. Um, so he can get a significant bang for his buck but only by running candidates. And I think that's what's going on. There. Yeah, but he's not running it. He's not, he's not using his own name to do it. He's using mineralogy. Um, if you look at all, all the signs, they're all authorised and endorsed by mineralogy. Yeah, and is he know. giving preferences? Sorry, to, is, he, is he announced any preference deals? Or pre uh, <laughs> do I, don't, he's... I don't think his preferences are going to matter that much because I don't think he's going to get much of a vote. Um, and he won't have people who will be able to man polling booths if, in fact, and that's another unknown with this election, you're able to man polling booths and not just stick your leaflets uh, yeah, and under a rock. And so, but I think what he's about is being able to spend advertising to depress the ALP vote. I think that's what he's about. Um, and it is, it's not going to be positive advertising for the LNP. Uh, he doesn't want to get himself caught looking like he's actually supporting a particular party. Um, but by running hard against Anastasia, um, he can do damage to her vote. Thanks. Graham, I've got a, another question for both of you. Um, oh, it's, it's, sorry, hang sorry. On. There's a few people who want to ask questions. Oh, that's right. That's right. 
Yeah, can you? I'll put Nicholas in charge of determining who gets to ask next. Um, so this is Max Herber. Uh, hi, Graham. Hi, John. Um, I just wanted to um, see if you could have another look at McConnell. Um, just from the uh, the polling I've been following on Tally Room, that it looks like it's a close three-way run, and it's a quite a large margin, but it's a bit of a sleeper seat. Um, uh, and with the three-way, it's going to get very complicated. And um, I'm just also interested to ask about the CFMEU pulling funding for the election, um, whether that's going to play in. Um, I know there's a lot of, um, they're seeking a lot of money at the moment from members, um, whether that's going to play into the uh, election at all. John, you're, you're the union expert here. Well, CFMEU uh, also contribute to the CATAS, um, as do the ETU. Uh, so the CFMEU raising money will be to raising, raising money for candidates to support mining. And uh, that will play out in Toowoomba and it'll play out in Burdekin. Uh, Graham's point on, on funding is an interesting point. It's just that the facts don't bear it out. The LNP have out, uh, raised Labor three to one. Three million they've raised and the Labor Party's raised a million. The, in terms of McConnell, um, I'm just not sure that the Greens this time uh, can overwhelm Labor. That, that seat, yeah, whilst it takes a new farm, uh, which would be good hunting grounds for the Greens, it does move out further. And I just think this time uh, with a sitting Labor member, Again, somebody who's run a couple of times for the Greens. I'm not, I don't know her, I just know the name. I think there's enough in that that Labor will outpoll the Greens and will the LNP outpoll the both of them? I doubt it. Uh, I, I, think, I think it's one to watch on the night, but I think this time it'll be held, the Labor will hold out the Greens however narrowly. Yeah. I think the thing with the CFME, well, there's a couple of things I'd say there. Um, there are a couple of barnacles that the ALP had that they needed to clean before the election, and more than a couple, but one was Jackie Trad, uh, an easy target. She's gone. Um, the CFME, um, there's definitely in my polling anti-union sentiment, um, and it, when you start talking about the CFMEU, it solidifies and it's not just people who are right of centre who don't like the CFMEU, it's people who are left of centre. So my view of the split with the ALP was that it probably suited both parties. Um, so the ALP weren't an easy target because they're getting CFMEU money. Uh, but the other thing with the change in the electoral laws is that it basically makes it inevitable uh, that we'll get a lot of third party campaigning because of these caps. Um, so the CFMEU is spending money on their own um, is something that you're going to see with a lot of unions doing, and you're going to see a lot of other organisations like Clive Palmer, et cetera, mm. et cetera doing, mm. uh, because of this cap. Mm. Uh, in the Redcliffe by-election, which was the last election run under a, a cap, of, oh, no, maybe the last two by the last by-election was, but under the, the Bly caps, um, I was given uh, uh, the spending figures um, for that, and the Labor Party spent this much, the LNP spent this much, and then firefighters, CFMEU, seven times was in this heap here. So uh, that's what happens when you put caps on. Uh, and if you're an organisation that's got lots of auxiliary organisations, you can end up spending more. So you know, I agree with John that the Labor Party hasn't raised as much as the LNP. I don't know that it matters that much. Um, there's other people going to be spending money that they're not going to give directly to the ALP, they'll do it on their own behalf, but also on the ALP's behalf. Yeah, the other thing about the CFMEU is that the CFMEU has a building division which everybody despises, mm. and they have a mining division which is far more acceptable, except if you're a mining company. Um, but for the purposes of it, it's called the CFMEU, but the mining division uh, recognises because of where, where they're up, up to in mining uh, that they've got to have a mining industry, whereas the building division 
is able to work deals with the big building companies who are often resented by the wider building industry. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Back to Richard Roberts. Richard. Richard Roberts? Still there? There. Yeah. We're back. Sorry yeah. about that. No, um, the, the, the sort of difference between Brisbane, South East, and so many other parts of Queensland, um, inner Brisbane's more woke, for want of a better word. Um, is it, it, would it be better for the conservative side of politics in Queensland to split again into liberal and national so that the national can be more country and the liberal can be more city and then they go into coalition? Because at the moment you've got this sort of one horse trying to meet both markets. Um, it's a problem the Labor Party's got too. But if that old split occurred again, do you think that these splitter parties like the Catters and the, the One Nations would then sort of start to fade because you've got a, this different marketing, but you also have a coalition, hopefully, if you're a Conservative? Well, look, I oppose the um, amalgamation, but I don't think you can uh, take it apart now. Um, some interesting things happening, you know, for example, uh, um, at a federal level, the seat of Groom, uh, which is basically Toowoomba, uh, was allocated in the original merger to the Liberal Party Groom down in Canberra because while they're one party here in Queensland, when they go down to Canberra, um, they sit in different party rooms depending on the allocation of the seat or which Senate spot you've got. Um, so, you know, for example, Matt Canavan is an LNP senator, but he sits in the National Party party room. Uh, Groom, while it's a country seat, was held by uh, Ian McFarlane uh, when the amalgamation happened. Uh, he was a Liberal, a minister. Uh, it stayed with the Liberal Party, and it has a long history of being a Liberal seat. Um, there was a motion of the state executive only a week or so ago that um, the people in Groom should be able to choose uh, because there's now a pre-selection going on for the by-election uh, with Tom McVeigh retiring, um, that they should be able to choose whether it stayed with the Liberal Party or went to the National Party. And I'm told, even though when the uh, merger, or at some stage, maybe since the merger, there was a vote on this and 75% up there wanted to go National Party, at the moment, apparently, it looks like most of them want to go to Liberal Party. Um, so yeah, you, I don't think you can underestimate how complicated within the LNP the sort of the history is um, and that, um, you know, untangling that, I think, would be basically impossible. You'd have two dysfunctional organisations, I would suspect, if you did that. So there'd be no natural leadership. And the people like the Catters and so on uh, would just take a... I would think as uh, a demonstration of uh, how incompetent you were that you put it together and then you took it apart. Uh, so I, I don't think there's uh, any um, uh, walking back, um, but I think they might end up in a situation like you've got in New South Wales with a much stronger sort of national party uh, and also people like the Fishers and Shooters, etc., taking off seats and sometimes actually doing deals with the ALP. But, um, I don't think you can do better than, than that, Richard. Yeah. Okay, thanks. That's all of them? Well, no other questions. We must have done a pretty good job. Um, well, John, thank you very much My for uh, coming along. I'll take you to the AIP cellar outside and you can uh, choose yourself a bottle of, uh, bottle of red or a bottle of white to take home. Yes. Uh, and thanks very much, everyone, for... Uh, uh, attending uh, and uh, if you've got any questions or anything like that uh, that you think of afterwards feel free to shoot me an email I think you've probably got my email address through various correspondences and if it's not for me it's for John I'll just flick it on to him and uh, he can make his own decision whether he uh, goes naked uh, with his email address so uh, thank you very much everyone <laughs>